أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول
Regarding the practical reformation on this subject, uh, I have been talking on this subject for the last two Friday sermons. Last Friday, regarding this subject, the, the teaching given to us by the Promised Messiah, uh, I mentioned some aspect of that uh, in the form of uh, certain questions. <coughs> Or I was telling that uh, how the Promised Messiah in his teaching, how he has mentioned these points and told, he has told us those things and, uh, and the, it was in a question answer form whether we do it or not. Our practical reformation does not finish with these few questions. The teaching of Islam, there are so many aspects of that. There are countless uh, commandments uh, are there which the Holy Quran has given us. Therefore, Hazrat Masih Maud in his teaching for our reformation and betterment he has made it very clear that I tell you very honestly that any person who out of 700 commandments of the Holy Quran, he ignores even the smallest commandment, he actually with his own hand closes the door of his salvation. So it is a matter of great fear and anxiety for us. And uh, each and every action of us, we and every step that we take, there is a need that we do all that with great uh, thinking and uh, uh, consideration. As I have mentioned in my previous sermons, this uh, the purpose of his, the advent of the Promised Messiah was to establish the supremacy of the teaching of the Holy Quran and to impose that uh, upon us and, uh, and also the noble example of the Holy Prophet and his tradition to make us follow that, that is the purpose. And for the purpose of uh, the achievement of this objective, he has drawn our attention time and again. If we honestly, we analyze ourselves and scrutinize ourselves, as I've mentioned many times before, then the practical reformation and by listening to these things which have been mentioned by the Promised Messiah it does take place for a few days but then the people many of us who come back to the same old uh, pattern as before <coughs> so we are like that old man whose example I have given in my previous sermons that uh, that whenever there is uh, there is a uh, pressure of the lid on it, it, uh, close, it is closed and uh, whenever the pressure releases, is, then it uh, pushes it out. So if the advice is given continuously, then people do uh, benefit from that, they are impressed by that and as soon as the pressure of this advice is lifted or slacks, then the spring of vices or the spring of self then it uh, spr springs forth the weakness of the nature of those people. 
many uh, devoted people, uh, very pious people, dedicated people, they have written that we are praying and we are doing our efforts. You also pray that uh, under the influence of these, uh, 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 under the influence of, uh, uh, as a result of these uh, advice, uh, this uh, pressure should not be released and it should not come out. Anyway, we have to uh, think and analyze that why this uh, this jack why this uh, tries to come out of the box again and again the reformation or the improvement of anything can be made in uh, in, in so many ways and uh, the various methods can be adopted for this purpose when when we know the reasons of this uh, uh, weakness or slackness so that uh, one should uh, try to remove those uh, causes. If the cause is there, so then after temporary reformation and relief, then the vice will turn, come back and it will be again there. So when I pondered over the, this point, uh, this point uh, and read the Quran, and then the analysis of Hadrat Muslim Maud Razila Ta'ala Anho, uh, I came to know about that, uh, the style of writing and the speech of Hadrat Muslim Maud Razila Ta'ala Anho, that he raises the possible questions, then he gives the solution to that by giving various examples. Quran and Hadith and uh, the in the light of the writing of the Promised Messiah as uh, he explains the solution of a certain problem we do not see that that uh, style somewhere uh, anywhere else so therefore I thought that uh, Hadrat Muslim Maud Anhu, I should be benefiting from his sermons and in the light of that uh, I should be highlighting those these causes uh, for you for the benefit of you. Uh, regarding the reformation of the actions, the things which become the hurdle in this way are, uh, they be influence that. Out of them, uh, the very first thing is that uh, there is the feeling of the people that uh, there are certain uh, vices, sins which are big and certain sins are small. Uh, people themselves are maybe under the influence of the various uh, scholars who have mentioned like that. They have decided that some sins are small and some sins are very big. And this is the thing which uh, actually becomes a hurdle in the way of practical reformation. And uh, as a result of that, uh, a person becomes bold and courage is there uh, to commit the sins. And uh, the importance of sin and uh, vices is uh, no more there in, the, in his heart. And they start feeling that if we commit a small sin, there is no harm in that. Or maybe that the punishment of that is not that big. Hadrat Musih Maud says that if there is a person who, who, who becomes sick, whether his uh, ailment is small or big, but if for that uh, uh, sickness, if you don't take the medicine and you do not do effort for the treatment of that, then the sick person will not recover from that sickness. If the black spot is there on the face, then it causes great concern that it may not go on expanding, expanding and uh, blacken the whole face. Similarly, there is a black spot of the sin and these smaller sins, by taking them lightly, they become uh, kabair, the bigger sins. And the smaller sins are those which are small black spots, which eventually uh, blackens the whole face. So this point must be remembered all the time, that no sin should be considered as small. Because when this thinking is there, that this is a small uh, sort of sin, and then uh, the mm, uh, seed of that sickness uh, and ailment does not uh, uh, go away. And sometime under situations, smaller sins, they become bigger sins. So in this respect, we have to scrutinize and analy analyze ourselves. Allah Almighty has, uh, has uh, given uh, prescribed a punishment even for a smaller sin and also for the bigger sins. So when we 
when we look towards the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that uh, he is the bigger and the smaller sin and the uh, good things, the good deeds, how he has explained. So then, uh, how he has explained it to different people. So then we find so many statements of the Holy Prophet when he was asked, when is the big virtue? Then he said, looking after your parents, that is a great uh, act of kindness, goodness. And uh, regarding some other person asking the same question, he would say that uh, offering the tahajjud prayer is a big uh, virtue. And uh, upon asking uh, somebody that what is the good virtue, uh, he says that uh, for you, the big virtue is that you should take part in jihad, participate in that. So this proves that uh, the big virtues, according to different situation and according to different people, it may differ, it may be different. Regarding the goodness of jihad, I may mention that this is one of the allegations put on us that we do not believe in jihad. At that time, when uh, Islam was being attacked by sword from all sides, then the jihad of uh, sword was the greatest uh, virtue. And uh, not to participate without a genuine real cause, then Allah Almighty has mentioned it something worthy of punishment of Allah. And uh, but uh, in the time of the promised Messiah, the Holy Prophet has mentioned that that he would uh, uh, harb, that he would uh, postpone the wars uh, because the methods of attack on Islam will be different, will be changed, and Islam as a religion, they will not attack on Islam with sword. And then through the literature, the press and media, and through various means, uh, through these, the attack will be there on Islam. So therefore, uh, the, uh, the promised Messiah and his community, they should uh, use this method uh, through which the attack is being made. And uh, uh, keeping that point in mind, Hazrat Masih Maudala Islam, he has mentioned in one of his uh, uh, verse, that now it is uh, uh, completely forbidden to go for uh, uh, jihad with sword for the cause of religion. So during the Holy Prophet وسلم, this was not only necessary but rather compulsory because Islam was being attacked by a sword at that time. But now that uh, uh, sort of uh, jihad is uh, no more there and that's why it has been postponed and uh, uh, until actually Islam the Islam is attacked by the swords by the opponent forces. Now the virtue and the ju justified jihad at this time is to spread the teaching of the Holy Quran, the jihad of ilm, knowledge and uh, through the press and media to present the teaching of Islam through the press. If uh, directly he, somebody is not taking part in that one because the lack of their own knowledge or because of some other reason. So in that, in the publication of literature and in uh, public activities, they can make some monetary contributions. But uh, the one who is doing this jihad, if he is not uh, taking care and discharging the duties towards the f family, wife and children, and he is not take, uh, paying attention to that. So then this is not going to be a good j big jihad for them. Rather the big virtue for that would be to look after the family and, and their requirement. And, uh, and to deprive them from their due right and uh, not to pay attention on the education of the children and to deprive them from that. Uh, that person becomes sinful as a result of that. The, in the time of the Holy Prophet وسلم, uh, despite uh, the uh, obligation of jihad as I you mentioned, uh, sometime he mentioned in, re in response to the question that the service to uh, your parents is the greatest virtues, virtue. So everybody according to the situation and the occasion uh, there is uh, the explanation according to that. So then we see that uh, uh, to spend so much money on those things which are not uh, uh, approved 
and from which uh, uh, people have been stopped. Nowadays the gambling machines are there and various types of uh, gambling is there. Many people are very fond of lotteries. They go to these gambling uh, places and machines and they play uh, the games there. But in the daily life they do not uh, tell a lie, they do not do injustice, they do not kill other people because uh, they think that uh, these uh, vices are very big one but uh, the gambling and uh, this and spending their money on unlawful things they do not consider it as bad so for such a person uh, the spending the money in a unlawful way is a great sin and uh, the other things uh, he already thinks them as a big sin and then we see that a lady, a, if he d she does not make her dress as modest and does not take care of the parda when she goes out and uh, bareheaded she goes out despite being an Ahmadi Muslim and uh, claiming that he goes out without hijab, without scarf or without any chadar or scarf uh, and the um, dress is very uh, tight and exposing the features of the body. And when they are asked uh, about uh, any uh, monetary sacrifice or ch charity, they are, and uh, she does not like telling the lie or anybody telling a lie in front of him, in front of her. So for this uh, lady to uh, mo give more monetary sacri sacrifices and to tell the lie, for, uh, for her it is more important that she should be uh, uh, making her dress modest and take care of the parda and its obligation. Uh, those, uh, there are certain things which are considered as small good things, small things, and, uh, and these are the things which uh, at one time, sometimes these very things uh, push them to big vices. In short, every sin and uh, the sin and the goodness the standard of that is according to the situation from person to person and the actions of the people uh, they they the different the dif difference in the definition is there regarding the goodness and the bad things but if somebody si thinks that uh, this vice is very um, bad thing is very bad, uh, very big and the other one is small and this uh, good thing is very big and very small. Until that moment if this thinking is there then nobody can is avoid the sins and committing mistakes. Always we should keep this point in mind that uh, big uh, uh, um, vices are those which a person is unable to avoid and one finds it too difficult to abandon that, to shun that and they have become the part of the habit of the person and the big uh, things, good vices, uh, good virtues are there which a person thinks them to, uh, finds it difficult to uh, do that. So some vices are uh, uh, big for others and small for others and sometimes the virtues are also for other, uh, some person it, they are big and some they are small. So if we have to, you have to go for your practical reformation then first of all you have to take out this thought from your mind for example that adultery is a big sin killing is a big sin and stealing is a big sin and backbiting is a big sin and uh, apart from that all other sins people think that they are smaller one so we have to take this thought out of our mind and also that we have to throw this idea from our uh, mind that uh, fasting and zakat and hajj they are big virtues and all other virtues apart from that they are small one uh, as uh, generally the Muslims they have this sort of uh, understanding if this thought is not thrown out of our mind then our practical aspect will always be weak for the strength of the practical uh, way uh, that will be attained when we, we understand this uh, thing mentioned by the promised Messiah Islam, that in the Holy Quran there are 700 commandments. The one who does not act upon even one uh, uh, commandment, he closes the door of salvation upon him. So we, uh, we should not just uh, like other people, we should not consider that some uh, virtues are big and uh, some uh, are small 
and in this matter in this regard the other muslims uh, their uh, their condition is uh, this that for example they think that uh, roza is the greatest virtue but offering the prayer in cre in congregation it's uh, not uh, so important but roza they think the fasting is very good they uh, come, uh, abide by it with the great uh, attention the one uh, for whom the zakat is obligatory then they would avoid paying zakat but they would observe the fast because if he does not observe fast then according to him it's a big sin and uh, you know if he saves uh, the zakat does not pay that so there was a, 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 this condition at one time i don't know what the condition is there in pakistan that after 74 when the ahmadis for the law of the purpose and constitution and law they were declared as non muslims in pakistan and then some uh, non ahmadis who had uh, accounts in the banks because the government at the end of the year uh, they deduct uh, from their accounts by force the zakat about on ahmadis as they have been declared as non muslim so it was not uh, uh, compulsory for them according to their law so in order to escape this zakat uh, some people they used to write on the bank forms documents as we are qadiani ahmadis so this was the condition of their belief otherwise they declare them ahmadis as non believers but in order to save their money they uh, don't bother joining the rank of the uh, non-Muslims uh, in that case. Uh, I don't know what is the condition at the moment. At that time, it was certainly this situation. So this condition and this situation is because uh, the standards of the virtue and the bad things and the sins, they do not see towards Allah Almighty. They do not see towards what the Holy Prophet has said but uh, the so-called uh, scholars and uh, other uh, uh, people they just follow their leaders Hadrat Masih Maud one incident has been mentioned by Hadrat Muslim Maud that during the month of Ramzan the Muslim Messiah was on a journey uh, he was going to Amritsar and uh, there was one occasion there was he was addressing in one place and uh, during the speech uh, he felt some dryness in his throat and then uh, looking at that somebody he presented a cup of tea to him and Muslim uh, just uh, turned it away but when he felt the same uh, dryness in the throat then uh, the person got more worried and he again presented the cup of the tea again he moved it away and he indicated with his hand that there is no need of that but but as the problem was still there and again there was a feeling of dryness in the throat then then he presented the cup of tea for the third time so then Hazrat Masih Maud perhaps thinking that if I don't take that then then uh, it will be taken as a show off and uh, and this uh, commandment and the facility which Allah Almighty has given that one may not observe the fast during the fast uh, so I, I will be showing it in a different way so he took uh, the cup of the tea and had a sip of that and the non Ahmadis who were sitting there they just he raised hue and cry that he claims to be the Mahdi and he has not observed the fast during the month of Ramadan according to them the importance of Roza and fast was uh, uh, this that uh, whatever may be the condition you just observe the fast whether it is uh, uh, not uh, you know so in the sight of uh, Allah and uh, Muslim Maud has written that uh, maybe 90 percent of those people are the 99 people even those who, who do not offer the prayer uh, prayer and 99 uh, percent would be those who usurp the rights and plunder the money of other people and uh, it was also and uh, it was also true that uh, maybe 99 percent of the people at that time they would be observing the fast because they considered fasting as a great uh, virtue but they do not observe the fast as the holy prophet sallallahu has mentioned that the one who tells lie or indulges in backbiting 
are swearing uh, and uses foul language, his fast is not the fast in the sight of Allah. He is simply starving and suffering from starvation. And if we analyze that the Muslims, the majority of those people, they, according to this standard, they are simply uh, are hungry and thirsty. But this uh, starvation, uh, according to them, is a big virtue. And this is good enough to for their salvation. Or, or it may be, it may be, they may add some other virtues, and they will say that these are the ways of our salvation and forgiveness. These are the people. These are the people who neither in this world establish the virtues in this life, nor. Uh, they are uh, able to establish the real standard of sin. So they have made their own standards, the big virtues and small virtues and big sins and big uh, smaller sins, they have made their own standards. And the result is that uh, according to their own definition, whatever they have made of the virtue, as compared, they just go, try to go for the bigger virtues according to their understanding and definition. And uh, that uh, sin which they consider as small, they are not ready to uh, fight against that. And uh, if they don't leave, it means they cannot fight with that. And in this way, they uh, go on getting another vice after one vice. And Islam has declared that uh, virtue the greatest one, which is difficult for people, and from person to person it may be different. And that uh, uh, vice is considered to be bigger, which a person cannot abstain. So if we have to reform ourselves, then this point is worth uh, is worth that we should keep it all the time that uh, we should acquire and try to have every goodness and we should try to abstain from uh, every type of uh, vices. Our uh, self-made definitions uh, cannot uh, um, make us really do the right things as required. Many a time it happens that uh, somebody uh, makes his own definition and he suffers loss and he and uh, some people uh, adopt certain good things and uh, they do not uh, adopt other things and uh, the vir virtues which appear to be small uh, because of the lack of uh, attention sometimes they deprive the person from all types of virtues and many a time the smaller sins uh, uh, they actually uh, cause irreparable loss to the virtue with spirituality and, uh, and uh, they make a person deprived from the uh, benefit of purity uh, from Allah Almighty. And sometimes when you commit smaller vices, the result is that uh, the seed of the uh, vice is still there and it is waiting for that moment when and uh, at the appropriate time it comes out. So therefore a lot of uh, care has to be taken. Uh, to uh, do away with uh, one vice or the, all the vices, it can only be done when all the people, they fully uh, endeavor for that. There is a community, there is a society. The, it's the duty of the whole Jamaat that they should endeavor collectively for the removal of these vices. And uh, if everybody according to their own definition, they commit uh, the, the uh, good, good things and the bad things, then somebody would be understanding something as a good or a big uh, um, a vice and the other would be considering it as smaller vice and maybe the third one is having uh, his own independent thinking, uh, different than these people. So then you, will, you won't be able to cleanse your society from vices. Uh, it will be done only in that case when all the people are thinking in one direction. For example, if uh, Muslims uh, a, a sin which is worse than anybody, any other thing, even worse than setting up partners with Allah Almighty, that is considered to be the eating of the pork. Every, uh, every person who commits all types of uh, crimes, uh, he would call himself Muslim. But if you say 
that you eat pork, then he would say that I am a Muslim. So how is it possible that I should partake from that? How can I eat pork? The reason is only this one, that uh, in the Muslims generally this feeling has gone there that eating the pork is uh, forbidden and it's a big sin. Uh, 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 despite uh, living in this uh, atmosphere and being um, born and brought up here, 99.9% uh, Muslims, they, they abhor and loathe eating the pork in this uh, society. This is because of that feeling which collectively uh, has been created among the Muslims. So therefore to stop the vices and uh, as to establish the virtues, uh, there is a need that we should highlight this feeling uh, among, among all the people in society that uh, a, a small uh, goodness is goodness and a small sin is also a big sin. When this realization is not there among each and every one of us and people are not doing effort for that, then the vices will continue to remain in the society and this will become a hurdle in the way of practical reformation. Then in practical reformation the second reason that is the society, that is the atmosphere and that is the uh, trend of imitating other people. Allah Almighty has kept this uh, feelings and sentiments in the nature of human beings because this is in nature that children also copy and so therefore the people, children have the this trend of uh, copying others and certainly this is something for our benefit but the bad use uh, of this uh, uh, inclination sometimes destroys a person or takes him to destruction. This imitation and imitating, this is the result of this society that uh, people learn the language from their parents or he learns uh, uh, so many other things, the good things he learns and a person becomes a good moral person, a, a child can acquire good uh, uh, morals by looking at the parents, if the parents are offering the prayer, reciting the Quran and acting upon that and if they are living together happily and they dislike uh, uh, telling uh, falsehood and then the children also they become they adopt these uh, uh, good things, but if uh, uh, falsehood and fighting and uh, mocking at other people and uh, this uh, attitude is there and uh, they don't care regarding the dignity of the Jamaat values or such uh, vices are there, when the children see this type of weaknesses among the parents, then because of this uh, a, a temperament of uh, imitating, he learns this type of vices. When he goes out, then in the society, among the friends, whatever he sees, he tries to uh, acquire that and to learn that. So therefore I always draw the attention of the parents that they should keep an eye on the atmosphere of their children outside and also uh, at, the ho at the home, the program that they watch on TV and the, on the internet, they should keep an eye on that. And this point is also worthy of great attention that the age of the reformation of the children is from the very beginning. This point should always be remembered and this should not be the way that when the children are grown up then we will do their tarbiyat. A two year, three year, that is the age of the proper you know, training and education of the children. As I said, the child at, the ho at home, he learns quite a few things from their parents and imitates them. So the parents, they should never ever think that uh, the child is very small and uh, he doesn't uh, care about anything, he doesn't know and uh, the child is actually looking at each and every action of the parents and uh, unconsciously he, everything is being, uh, uh, you know, going into his mind and at a certain time uh, he starts following that. The, uh, daughter, uh, the girls they in imitating their mothers in their sports, they, they also try to imitate the dress of like the parents and the boys, they imitate their parents. So whatever good thing or bad thing are there in the parents, they would follow that. For example,
when they will grow up and when they will be taught that these are vices and these are the good things as for example falsehood is there the telling in the falsehood telling lie is bad and fulfill problem promise is good then a, a child who has uh, seen who has see, who has not seen the good standards of the his mother and father and uh, a child who who has not uh, the promises being fulfilled at, in the atmosphere of the f uh, house and family so uh, part uh, in the education he would be considering that uh, telling lies is bad and fulfilling promise is good but practically he will not do that because in the house he w he would have seen the practice uh, against uh, this uh, teaching so the uh, the uh, the, uh, the habits of the ch children become very permanent and uh, they then become very strong if a child looks at uh, uh, his uh, mother that she is not offering the prayer and if the father comes and asks that have you offered the prayer so she would say that i have not offered uh, uh, i will offer later on so the child will uh, learn that this is a good reply if somebody asked me that have you offered the prayer i will give you the same reply I have not yet offered, but I will offer it later on. So, but when he looks, uh, listens to this answer that I forgot, that I have uh, offered the prayer, but the child was uh, with the mother the, throughout uh, the day, and he knows that the mother has not offered the prayer. So then the child would have this answer in his mind. And similarly, the bad things uh, from the father, they also go into the mind of the child and whatever wrong answers which they give the father gives the child acquires those things and remembers that so the uh, both of them the father and the mother if they are training the children in a wrong way then uh, they are taking that child to the right uh, wrong path and they are giving him wrong teaching through their uh, wrong practice and wrong uh, example and the child when he grows up then he does the same thing and he gives the same replies similarly uh, uh, with the neighbors and the friends of the father and the mother uh, uh, if they do something wrong uh, that is also uh, affecting the child so if uh, truly the practical reformation is uh, to be done and uh, if you have to take care of the proper training of your children so that you, the standard of their uh, doings should be high so then the parents should also keep in mind their own actions and their friendship with uh, should be with such people who are practically good type of people so anyway uh, in the childhood there is a tendency of uh, imitating and the inf influence of the society is there and the impression is very lasting very strong if you put the children into good atmosphere then he would always be doing good things if you put him into bad company then he would be doing bad things and uh, those people who do bad things when they are taught uh, when they are grown up that this thing is bad don't do that so then uh, it would be beyond uh, their control then the parents uh, uh, should not have any complaint against the child that they have gone out of the hand so it is a big responsibility of the parents that through their example they should make their children regular in prayer and establish them on the telling the truth and through their examples the other good morals they should also be taught to them so that they can also follow those things and good morals by swearing falsely uh, abstain from that so that the children could also abstain from uh, this uh, bad thing and practically these ideas which are created in the mind uh, uh, how long they are per persist uh, persistent and how long lasting these are he has given the example of a, a, a companion of the promised Messiah he was from a Sikh family then he became a Muslim uh, these people do not eat the flesh of the cow and uh, and uh, the other people they 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 made it a point that we are going to make you eat that so and uh, once i saw his muslim house says that he was going into the kitchen and uh, they were saying to him that now we are going to make you eat a piece of that flesh and he was uh, 
you know, requesting them, supplicating to them, then please don't do like that. So, and uh, he, 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 perhaps he or some other new Muslim, uh, he was made to eat that and he, he so much liked uh, that he vomited the whole thing. So this is the result of uh, this uh, feeling which they had against the uh, beef. Uh, that uh, he, after becoming a Muslim, he continued to dislike that. Because on the doctrine side, he he has changed his belief. He has adopted a new uh, belief. But uh, the thing which was uh, a practical thing, the uh, you know the dislike of the beef that was put into his heart that continued to remain there. Hazrat Muslim also says that uh, practice is something which people can see. People follow that very quickly and then the seed grows further but uh, as the faith and the doctrine is not something which they can see then it remains within a limited circle and the example of that is uh, is like uh, something which are grouted uh, to the tree then there is a new type of uh, fruit and new type of branches come out and if it is uh, if it is specially taken care of then then it grows further and the action is like uh, that uh, thing which is uh, sowed by sowing the new seed when the seed is sown then it takes the root in the earth and when it then it grows up and becomes a tree so the spread of the bad action is comparatively easier and uh, in society it spreads because of the actions of our own people and also because of the bad actions of other people. That is to say that uh, in goodness and uh, vices, the impact of society is great. So therefore, always we have to keep this point in mind. And there are other causes which, inshallah, I will be mentioning later on. Allah Almighty enable us to reform ourselves and also to reform our children and Allah Almighty enable us to keep this point in mind and take care of that. There is a sad news today which I have to tell and after the janaza prayer I will be leading that janaza that is Mukarram Khalid Ahmed Al Baraki Sahib Marhum of Syria. Khalid Ahmed Al Baraki of Syria. Hazur Sayyid Khalid Baraki Sahib was an engineer, he was 37. His parents uh, in, in 1986 uh, in a suburb of uh, Damascus, they were the first people to do the bath and uh, his father uh, under the threat, uh, he had to go uh, into the prison and uh, similarly uh, in these recent incidents which are taking place in uh, Syria, uh, his father was arrested twice. Khalid Baraki Sahib, all the uh, brothers and sisters, they are Ahmadis uh, by birth. Uh, and the intelligence uh, agency uh, in Syria, some a branch of them, they arrested them. And, uh, and we could not get any sort of information about that. And finally, on 9th of December 2013, his uh, father was informed by the military in, in, in intelligence and then he was given some papers, uh, um, a paper related to his son and uh, he was told that he has already passed away in Adilai wa Inna Ilaha Rajun and the dead body was not even given to him, to his father. Uh, perhaps, uh, the, uh, per, perhaps he was tortured very severely and as a result of that he died. Khalid al-Braki, his uh, piety and nobility and religious education and observing the teaching, the witness of that has been given by Ahmadis and non-Ahmadis. Uh, the recitation of the Holy Quran, uh, his voice used to be uh, exceptionally good. He was very kind-hearted, very kind and helping and uh, all the responsibilities entrusted to him, he was very uh, always taking care of that in cooperation and devotion and attachment with Jamaat and Khilafat was a part of his life in his nation and all the people he was having love for them. Uh, he was president of a local Jamaat, he was Septi Talimul Quran and Waqf Arzi. He was serving as the, in that capacity, he was a Musi and he was very regular in contributions. His wife is also Ahmadi and there are three uh, children 
in, and uh, the two children are under six, and Hassamuddin, uh, uh, who, who is uh, very small and born during this period. On the Facebook, uh, before his arrest, Khaled al-Baraki Sahib has written that uh, the love of uh, the country is uh, part of faith. Uh, may Allah protect our country and deliver it from all uh, problems and make it beautiful than, more than before. And uh, these, the people should be those who are, who are loved by Allah and enable them to love one another. And oh my, oh my Allah, the, you help the pious people to spread the good, good wish, good things, and may the, his good wish and prayer could be fulfilled then, so that this order in the country. Tahir Nadim Sahib says that uh, uh, frequently there was a contact on email uh, during our stay in Syria, we contacted him. He was an example of hospitality, very simple, very a smile on the face. And uh, in the, he used to live in the house of uh, the Jamaat in uh, Damascus. Uh, and uh, he was so fond of knowledge that uh, with his cousin, he used to come to us along with the cousin and he, there was discussion on scholarly subject and whatever book he used to get he used to read that and uh, from the old uh, books from the library and uh, the old uh, articles from uh, al-Bushra he got it and then he wrote them on computer and then he sent those articles to us and uh, he used to help us in revising and there are various translations which are dying he used to help us he had a great love with the, the promised messiah and uh, extreme devotion to khilafat and uh, and uh, the arabic programs on M M mta he, he became emotional and sent his message a, a one uh, arabic poem of the promised messiah Islam, he recorded with great uh, passions and feelings on April 2012, he wrote a letter, and in, on which in which he has written his uh, dream of 1906, uh, uh, and that a heavy responsibility is going to be entrusted to him. And there was uh, the advice that he should not show any weakness. After that, when he was uh, made the president, he thought that the, this dream has been fulfilled but uh, but there was he was instructed that he should give away his life being steadfast in the way of Allah and uh, perhaps he gave his life in this very way and he was uh, he was very steadfast Allah Almighty may continue to for, uh, may forgive him and exalt his station there is a uh, Parvez Sahib another missionary who was there he says that uh, with the great uh, effort and uh, honesty he used to work for the Jamaat and he used to say that uh, I do it because I am an Ahmadi so that the Ahmadis are true and hard working and uh, they are always very loyal and he was very fond of Tabligh and, uh, and as it is forbidden that uh, nobody can preach at work so he would say that uh, I, I tried to impress the people with my good behavior and morals. He was, the, uh, he, he was great in love with, uh, for his country and for his uh, friends and uh, colleagues. He used to tell them that uh, one should love one's country. This is the teaching of Islam. And the sermons I delivered on, uh, uh, on these topics, he has um, uh, given this uh, recording of the sermon to his friends and uh, he used to advise that they should become peaceful citizen of the country. But uh, some bad-natured people, uh, those who were opposed him, they persecuted him and tortured him. And he got this great honor of martyrdom. Allah Almighty may continue to exalt his station. Allah Almighty may give uh, solace and comfort to his children and also give uh, 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 comfort and uh, peace to his parents as well. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Nahmudu, wa Nustainu, wa Nustaqfiru, wa Numinu bihi, wa Natawakkalu alayhi, wa Na'awzu billahi min shurur anfusina, 
ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ودوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله